What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Welcome back folks. It has been a crazy day today. I just wrapped up my AMA over on YouTube for the first time. We had the CEO of Aftermath Islands on the show explaining to everyone what they are doing in the power of the metaverse and the Lux Lines Oasis. That YouTube video is now up now. You should go give it a listen. Now, folks, we got a lot to go over. We're going to talk about a new Ripple partner. We're going to hear from Brad Gollinghouse in that exclusive interview at Davos. I played to you the earlier part um, this morning. I'm going to play you another clip from it. You're not going to want to miss out on that. And then we're going to talk about is the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit already over. An interesting tweet was put out from Brett Hill that showed that there was like a leak back in the day when this whole thing really first kicked off that there was headlines and there was, there was documents stating that the lawsuit was over and that it came to a... I don't say came to an end, but the SEC pretty much dropped it. So without further ado, I'm not going to waste your time. I want to get into this thing. We got a lot to do. Bitcoin, what are you doing? It was $24,460. Ethereum, $1,662. USDT and USDC both on a dollar peg. Its XRP is coming in at a mean lean 39 cents. Total cryptocurrency market cap, $1.1 trillion, as the Bitcoin dominance is at 41 0.89%. Let me just put my phone on mute real quick. It always seems to blow up when I start my videos. This is not how it usually works. Now, if you didn't watch this morning's video, go give it a listen. Chris Larson shares his secrets. Brad Gollinghouse from Davos. We got a lot to do, but what are we looking at here? Are we looking at a mega pump, folks? The RGB of XRP is explicitly indicating a mega pump is coming. But my concerning is the rule of the judge. If the ruling is in our favor, then XRP will go to green one. If not, then we have to wait to green two. What do you think? Green one. He's thinking we head on down. Or he's thinking, or go green one up, green two. We get there. We got to wait, triangle. Down. I don't, folks, all I know, when the lawsuit comes to an end, and if XRP, not if, when XRP gets clarity, this thing is going to go freaking nuts. Does it happen day one after the announcement? Does it happen day 30 after the announcement? Time will tell, but the fact is the exchange is going to relist it. The institutions are going to buy it. We're going to have clarity. You're going to get money ground back on board. You're going to see Western Union file feet. Maybe we get a likes of Uber, Amazon. We know Bank of America is in the pipeline. This all adds up to the recipe for success, and it all adds up to a green XRP. The all-time high is going to look like child's play when we are all said and done here. Now, here's what I'm talking about. Brett Hill said this. Ripple case was dropped a long time ago, but it, but this been kept from the general public. We already won. He's talking about October 1st, 2021. And let me blow this up for those of you looking at the screen. DeVos and Plimpton LLP is pleased to announce that the SEC is dropping the case against the crypto company, Ripple Labs. They claim that the cryptocurrency issued by Ripple Labs XRP was the security and therefore would have to comply with much stricter regulations. All their headlines, Yahoo Finance, Law.com, stating that the uh, charges were being dropped. Why do I think this isn't the case? I think it's not the case because I was asked it from my friend right here, Country Crypto. He said, what do you think, buddy? I said, well, fortunately, we heard all the call-ins, we heard all the dial-ins, we heard all the phone conferences, and it was still ongoing. Maybe, just maybe, and the way I think it's going to play out is that XRP is going to be deemed not a current or not a security in secondary markets, but we will see the Ripple side of it, the Chris Larson and Brad Gollinghouse, Brad Gollinghouse side of it, go on for a little bit longer. Now, here's part two of that interview. Listen to what Brad is talking about here at Davos, folks. You, you touched upon something that I think is very relevant and, and something we've heard a lot about, and that's regulation, right? You, you look at crypto, and if, if I look back, crypto started as something that was more anti-regulation, anti-system following the, the financial crisis of 08, and yet you are an advocate of regulation. How do you reconcile these two? You know, when I uh, first got exposed to crypto, there's no question that, you know, the, the, the perspective was anti-government, you know, Bitcoin kind of came from that heritage. And I always thought these are amazing technologies, but if you wanted to have the broadest impact for the broadest population, you needed to work with the system and work with governments and work with regulators. So for really since the beginning of Ripple's life, we've been engaging regulators globally and that has, I think, been to our benefit for sure, uh, you know, in lots of different 
jurisdictions. The United States, interestingly, is really behind lots of other countries. And you know, here in Davos, I made the argument to the various sessions around crypto that like we spend too much time talking about the U.S. Regula regulatory framework because it's quite a bit behind countries like the U.K. or Japan. Well, certainly Switzerland was early and aggressive and codifying and being specific about what the regulatory framework for crypto would look like. And when you're clear about the framework, that allows entrepreneurs and investment capital to flow in because it reduces risk. When you don't know what that looks like, if you're an entrepreneur, one of the first pieces of advice I give people is don't start your company in the United States at this point until the rules are clear. Mm -hmm. Most crypto entrepreneurs, I find they want to follow the rules of the road, but if you don't know what the rules of the road are, that you makes make them hard. up or you don't know where to be. Yeah, so if you operate and start, I mean, we're a very global business. If you are a Swiss company, well, you know what the Swiss regulatory frameworks look like. Even countries like the UAE and frankly, even South Africa is getting ahead of the United States. Very interesting perspective. And, and you touched upon something, regulation. Um, there is a, a, an issue and an open dispute between you and the SEC on, on your uh, crypto coin, the XRP, whether that is a security or not. And I know that a lot of people are really waiting and, and really the, the, the outcome is very important. What is your take on it? Where do you stand? What do you see the issues uh, being there? Yeah. Well, so first of all, it is very important, not just for Ripple, but really for the whole crypto industry. You know, the, the U.S. is the largest economy in the world. Certainly, we want crypto to thrive as it is in other countries uh, in the United States. The, the United States Security Exchange Commission has taken the position that Ripple's sales of XRP constitute an unregistered security sale. And it gets into this very nuanced legal definition of what is a security. We use XRP as a currency. We use it for cross-border settlement. Uh, you know, it doesn't give you any rights or title or governance of Ripple. In fact, it's an open source technology that it's hard to think about. So if XRP is a security, it's a security of what company? Who, who should file the registration statement? You know, if it's an open source, well, should, that, should Ripple do that? I mean, the other frustrating part, uh, two kind of just anecdotes on this. One, the only country on the planet and we, you know, we operate in 50 plus countries. The only country on the planet that has uh, alleged that XRP is a security is the United States, which is odd when you know, we're actually, Ripple's been profitable, we pay taxes in the United States, I'm a US taxpayer, and it's just kind of like, wow, this is, uh, it, it, frankly, it's the reason why we are doing more and more outside the United States, both from a hiring, uh, you know, our second largest office is now London. Uh, now, on the case itself, we think the law is actually clear, and we think the facts are on our side, we think the law is on our side. And so we're actually quite optimistic. The case has been going on for about two years. Uh, it's fully briefed in uh, district court, federal district court in the Southern District. Uh, we expect closure within months. Uh, you know, you, when, the, when the judge gets the case, you don't have a timeline. So the judge will take the amount of time the judge wants. But uh, I'm pretty optimistic. I do think it's important for the whole industry, and uh, I'm looking forward to closure. Brad, if, if I may, and I, I... It's coming to an end. He knows it, I know it, we all know it. It's funny. Isn't it funny, as Brad said? XRP is seen all, it's seen all around the world. No one thinks it's a security, except the United States, where they are based. Isn't, isn't it funny from his comment, how he stated, who, who should file the paperwork of XRP being a security? It's a lot of people using it. So who's filing? I have XRP, am I filing? Are you filing? Should MoneyGram has, have filed? Why did the SEC allow it to go on? Why did the SEC allow the Ripple and MoneyGram deal to go down if they knew XRP was being used if they thought it was a security back then? There's a lot of questions, folks, that have to be answered. A lot of questions. But what I want you to keep in mind is that as we look at Ripple, as we look at the global adoption, as we look at XRP and XRP's global adoption, Ripple keeps on building. Ripple keeps on hiring. And at the end of the day, when this is all said and done, XRP is going to be two and a half years a step of all these other cryptocurrencies out there because they have clarity. This Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit, is it about the entire crypto market? It is. And the aspect that at the SEC is overstepping the boundaries and trying regulation by enforcement. But at the end of the day, when the lawsuit is over, it's about XRP. And it's about XRP becoming 
a non-security, a commodity, a, a currency, whatever they label it, as FinCEN said, a virtual currency within the U.S., as all these other cryptos that are from the U.S. or that these exchanges list in the U.S. have to still answer the question from the SEC. What are we? Who can use us? Because until they get that answer, it's all a guessing game. And you know what happens? Your coin can be pumping. It could be up 36,000%. And the SEC can come out and be like, listen, we think this is a security. It's going to come down 36,000%, folks. Now, I want to chime in on this because this is actually big news. We covered it before, but I want to cover it again for those of you who are new to the channel. Ripple is expanding in the UAE. I'm going to take a wild guess here. I'm going to tell you that the... Uh, the United Arab Emirates is going to be one of the biggest on-demand liquidity users out there. And I do believe that we're going to have India, the UK, Australia, Japan, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, all tied in to these corridors, folks. I'm going to leave it like that. It's been a long day. Work 14 hours today. Wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.